Ola from Barcelona. Barcelona. What's up guys? Oh my gosh, we are so freaking stoked for today's adventure. We are going to the second best restaurant in the entire world right now, Disproof Park. And this place is a waiting list that happens months in advance. Signed up for the wait list because we don't plan months in advance. And then we got this call just last week telling us that we got a reservation and like, I, you would have thought I won the lottery. <gasps> what? <gasps> oh my God. I could not be more excited. Three Michelin stars, second best restaurant in the world. Not only is this the second best restaurant in the world, but you don't get one, two, you get two three world-class chefs, all who trained at El Bulli, who have started this restaurant in the heart of Barcelona. And El Bulli is like where cooking became what it is today. The, like, the birthplace of avant-garde cooking and gastronomy and just one of like the cornerstones of, of the culinary world. And not only are we getting to share this with each other, we've been at some of the world's best restaurants together and that's been super special, but this is the first time we're really getting to share it with one of our close friends way back here. It's Zach. Oh, hey guys, good to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. Discrutar literally means to enjoy in Spanish and by golly am I prepared to enjoy this incredible meal. Hey, bienvenidos. Hello, chef. Where are you from? Oh, wow. Pleasure. We're from USA. USA, fantastic, amazing. Sorry for the fangirl squeals, but remember those world-class chefs we were talking about? We just I'm met sorry. one of them, Chef Oriol Castro. It is already so amazing. Like, I just love how bright and beautiful it is in here. There's this gorgeous courtyard out there. Like, just coming in, like, you're taken in by, like, all of the just, like, art and thought that went into the design. They even came and, like, gave us hand sanitizer out of this amazing, beautiful shell. And now they just brought these menus for us, but they're not actually menus as much as they're just, like, word maps. Instead of spoiling the surprise, they've just given us words that are the feelings that are behind the dishes. The biggest ones are experiences, exclusivity, friendship, who brought Zach for some real friendship today, memories and sensations, all of which like obviously get you so excited. But there's also some super interesting ones like game, childhood, team, less is more. The like kind of strangeness of this menu has me so excited for just the absolute surprise of what's to come. This is the ladyfinger with mint and passion fruit and rum. They said to eat it with two hands. Mmm. Whoa. The combination of like the creamy immediately melt in your mouth texture of the ice cream, but also the like crunchy minty candy on the bottom is unreal. And there's these fruity notes, these citrus notes, these um, a little bit of the rum note. That was on the menu was teamwork and like three people just came and at the same time took our plates away. Like, this is awesome. Absolutely incredible. This is such a fun way to just awake your senses like there was freshness, there was richness, there were so many things going on there, and like, I'm just ready to get started. Good look at what's to come. <laughs> this is a rose drop, and it just looks like the morning dew that like has collected on this petal. Mmm, intense rose flavor. And it's like that, that like spherification that they do that creates like a shell on the outside and the liquid is captured inside. It's like the most elevated version of a gusher. Now, for the thing that looks like a white raspberry, but actually it is like a, an ice cream. Intense lychee, so good. Playing with the unexpected texture, like a popsicle, which melts away. Meringue beetroot, very light, airy. It's got a lot of savory notes in it from the beet. It has a little sugar, but it just dissolves right away, and then the beet flavor comes through. You know, like an earthy, very nice, and beautiful as well. You know, they say you, you eat first with your eyes. And this, this is appealing to that, for sure. It's not like something I've ever had before. On our like list that they gave us, it did say like minimalism and simplicity as being some of the big words that we were going to experiment with tonight. They literally just bought, brought us a plate of different sprouts. They have the labels, so like starting off with the borage. Like 
cucumber. This one has an intense arugula flavor, but it's from Ricula. It's like a like this is so weird. Very much getting this less is more sort of mentality of this dish. This is definitely one of those plates that you see in like TV and you're like, they're serving that at this fancy restaurant and calling it a dish. This is so weird, but like, it's so cool to experience how like concentrated these flavors can be in such a minimal way. Like, this is awesome. I'm not a big salad guy, but I think I can get behind a salad like this. Tomato cake here, but it looks like astronaut ice cream. And you know, I'm gonna stand by that. It is exactly like that. It's like rehydrates in your mouth almost. So intense in that tomato flavor. <laughs> those olive oil spheres just bursting in your mouth. So, so good. Liquid salad. Good punch of celery in there. That foam. There's little spheres at the bottom there. That's a fun part. In-house truffle infused vodka. Surprisingly mellow for what is effectively a straight liquor. Because of how strong that truffle note is, it balances out the straight vodka that's in it. Very, very nice. It has kind of whiskey notes because you're getting that earthy barrel kind of essence from the, the truffle itself. And the best part is we did not order this vodka like separately. Like this is part of the tasting menu. Made to be enjoyed with caviar. This is a bun with caviar and sour cream inside. To the caviar with the cream and the sweet salty bread. Like this like crazy party of flavors in your mouth that pair together so well. There's so many textures. The spheres of caviar kind of popping the cream from the sour cream. The like crunch on the outside and the doughiness on the inside of the bun. It's just like a magical thing. Like absolutely delicious. And I get it. Add the truffle to this and like Whoa, this is, you're on a whole new playing field. And this is one of the most iconic dishes from Disfrutar, and I can definitely see why. Hands down, my favorite dish so far. Every dish has been so great. Look, this has got me really excited for everything that's to come, because now we're in the big leagues. That was one of the best things I've ever had. Everything came together to make something truly special. This is so much fun. Look at the little magnifying We're getting glass. the plate and the childhood. <laughs> yeah. It's like I spy. This is a custom plate with a little human cut out of it. And then swing over to admire the tiny, tiny bubbles in this smoked butter. And of course, on the other end, caviar. <laughs> Never say more, no to more caviar. Zero resistance on the butter. You're just collapsing. I made my way to the caviar on that bite. Outrageous. Outrageously good. Creamy, salty. There's still a little bit of that, that smoked butter left. Melding with it. Finish with that crisp. Giving you texture beyond all the texture you could need. Together, this is the package. That caviar is phenomenal. What an experience. This is a gazpacho sandwich, like the gazpacho soup. And it kind of looks like your typical white bread. And then you pick it up and the bread just like becomes kind of a powder in your fingers. Honestly, this is probably the first dish I've ever had that has a smelling component. 25 year old vinegar that they sprayed in this glass for you to sniff as you take bites of the gazpacho sandwich. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Woo. It's like a gazpacho ice cream here in the middle. And the bread itself melts in your mouth, melts in your fingers. Like it's not really bread. The gazpacho has this perfect tomato-y bun flavor. I mean, it tastes like gazpacho. There is a completely different flavor that you get as you're sniffing this vinegar. It's adding acid to it just by smelling it. Gazpacho is such a classic Spanish dish and having it in such an interesting, creative way, it was, that was phenomenal, so cool. They first brought over this coaster looking thing with a picture of a dish. This is the classic way that this dish is presented. But then they brought us this plate. Basically, the same components, deconstructed, reimagined, olive. Beautiful piece of mackerel there. Easily, hands down, best piece of mackerel 
I've ever had. What's really great about it, how fatty it is. It's just like creamy, melt in your mouth. Absolutely perfect. Olive. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Expected it to be more like a gusher. But it said the outside was almost like a white chocolate, but it was so thin that it's just like, bloop, gone. Like everything just melted, and then it was just like a rush of liquid. It's like a water balloon. Super <laughs> delicious. I don't even know how something that like melts that quickly in your mouth was like structurally sound enough to sit here on the plate. My mind is blown. And I love the element of them bringing out the poster with like the classic version of the dish. It's so cool to be like paying tribute to the absolute classic while also enjoying such an innovative and funky new experience. And speaking of innovative. <laughs> These are beautifully presented crochini mushroom leaves made in a microwave. Such an intense and delicious flavor in here. The texture of caramelization is like every time you're eating something and you're like, I want the crispy bits of that. Like this is the crispy bits that make things delicious. That is the texture you're getting here. That is the like mouthfeel you're getting here. Getting that amazing umami mushroom taste in a delicious, crunchy bite. Mm. Absolutely delicious. The epitome of umami flavor. It is umami. I want a bag of this. Forget potato chips. I need mushroom chips. Individual square sheets of potato starch imported from Japan and then assembled baked. They build up the, the layers and it rises and aerates like a bread. Topped with delicate, delicate slices of mushroom and those olive oil spheres. Very, very, very strange. Sometimes pastries have like some, some fluffy parts, others less less fluffy. This is like consistent throughout. So much air that they've managed to capture in there. All of those spheres, always fun, always delicious. I think fine dining, you think like 16 forks and 12 knives and whatnot. But so many of the things we've had here are finger foods. You're interacting with your food and that just adds another element. And in that way, the spheres of olive oil aren't just beautiful and fun. They also serve a practical purpose of like letting you interact with it without getting your hands all, all messy. This is another one of the absolute classics from this fruit tart. This is the tempura fried egg yolk. So first, take a bite out of the top. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. It's like this perfect egg yolk inside. Take a bite of that. And then she said to pour, there's like multiple steps. Each dish we have is like something fun and interactive to it as well. It's not just like, oh, I'm eating this and the flavors are good. It's about the texture, it's about the process, but also the flavors are really good. Mm. Inside of the eggshell is this dark rich gelatin, adding this delicious, powerful flavor to the richness of the egg. It's fantastic. This is so fun. And the tempura melts in your mouth. We've got some serious texture play going on. We have some mushrooms and oyster. The base of this is beautiful foamy aerated vinegar made with mushroom. Mmm, so light, so hairy. Again, repeated theme here, umami. The foamy creaminess of the mushroom slides you right into the oyster. Also, just buttery, smooth, so light. These spheres are pesto. Then we have pancetta, and underneath it, a smoked eel. Pesto beef. That's my kind of jewelry. Pesto, obviously, it's fun and spherical. It also has such a bold, boosted flavor coming in from pancetta itself. There's just the perfect rich fattiness melts in your mouth. In the region that we are in, Mari Montagna is a classic dish. Mar as in the sea, Montagna as in the mountains, kind of like a surf and turf. And so this actually has the pork and underneath it a smoked eel. And together, which is so bizarre, but together it is the richest melt in your mouth. Bacony, fatty, perfect texture. 
I get it. And it's just so fun. Beaded pesto pearls. Absolutely incredible. This is a plate liquor. This is really the most fun I've ever had in a meal in my life. Like, it's such a good time. This is their take on a carbonara, the macaroni on the, the bottom of this beautiful bed of Parmesan cheese is not made of wheat or any grain actually. It is made of gelatin and consomme, but not just any consomme, it's consomme made from Iberian pig. Hamon Iberico? Yeah, that one. So beautiful, translucent. And the texture of the macaroni, because of the gelatinous nature, it's just so, so delicate. The Parmesan gets to shine in this dish quite a bit. It's like if you just took umami and savory aspects of carbonara, took out all the carbs, just intensified, dialed up to, a, to 11 in terms of that flavor. 11 out of 10. That was so good. We were only halfway through the menu and it feels like I've eaten like a whole day's worth of food. We are being pampered. What an experience. Love this. Sake is a traditional Catalonian soup, like a fish soup. And so this is like a kind of a deconstructed version of it, but they gave us a little cappuccino of more soup here on the side. This is the best fish texture that I've ever had in my life. It just melts. Delicious, absolutely insane. And the saffron just pairs so nicely with it, giving you that kind of like nose feel you sometimes get yeah. from just how fragrant it is. The textures, the colors, like the plate, the dish itself is so fun. Have my little cappuccino. <laughs> the soup is so creamy, rich, delicious. And on top is this like thick, Cream. That's just absolutely incredible. Such a delicious ode to such a classic dish. I love dishes with a name. And this dish's name, the goose that laid a golden egg. Beautiful fried egg with a golden yolk in the center. <laughs> the golden egg, actually not ordinary yolk at all. Mmm. It's like a spicy sauce that I bet is gonna partner so well with the seafood that's lining this dish. Shrimp actually has this like sweet side to it that pairs so nicely with this spicy sauce that is the, the golden goose's egg. Delicious. <laughs> what? <laughs> A mystery dish. I don't have words. On top we have sweet corn based sphere. On top of some foie gras. On top of a sugar press. So you've got the fresh flavor of the corn, the creamy, fatty flavor of the foie gras, and then the sweetness that kind of rounds it all out. Amazing. Unexpected. This is one of my favorite dishes ever. Amazing. Both a meal and a show because they bring it in these boxes and they ask you, okay, interactive experience, reach over and try to pick it up. But what you pick up is just the stick. They actually got me with it because they lined it up perfectly. This is our apple cider with some dry ice. It smells so incredible. And during this course, it's just for smelling. I'm so pumped. These little things are amazake, which obviously is not the highlight of the dish. That's what is on the side. But we discovered it in Japan on our honeymoon when we were in Tokyo. And it's just this delicious, like rice, creamy, fermented beverage that you can get there. And now it's a sauce on our dish. Pigeon here. We're definitely moving into the sweeter dishes with a mango sauce here on the pigeon. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever had pigeon before. It's like a steak. Like, it's a dark pigeon. Oh, wow. And it's rich and like dark, like a like a duck. The mango giving it just the right amount of sweetness. And the mint as well. 
giving it some of that freshness back. <laughs> Memories. Memories was one of the words on our little word chart menu. Amazake is definitely taking me back to our honeymoon in Tokyo. Tokyo was one of the places where I really started to like try more unique foods too and discover new flavors and like we're doing it again here so it's like actually a perfect callback to that for me and for my personal memories. Do you remember the, the cider with the, the dry ice that was providing like a nice scent for, for our last course? Well, now it's in a glass, but the glass was smoked. So playing with like the cold, dry iced, chilled cider, but the smoke, very good. Really refreshing. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Walnuts. Ready, sit. <laughs> what? Oh. Mm. And cheese, I think. Nice cheese, not too sharp, but pairs really nicely with the walnut itself. The combination, mm -hmm. perfect. How'd you get that in there? <laughs> I'm thinking through that way, right? No. <laughs> Here we have like four different types of like walnut. This walnut has been like put in a solution that like breaks down the hardness of the shell, softens it up. She said on the last one, like think about like, could I eat the shell of that last walnut? No, it was so hard to break apart. So now we're getting to experience actually eating that shell. Then this triangle is like a walnut praline. And then this one is like soaked in a Catalonian liquor. That's not what I was expecting. The walnut is definitely providing some real sweetness, but the foam is this yummy, pungent, like creamy, cheesy deliciousness. I love a good praline, so I'm excited for this. Mm. Oh my god. Crunch on the outside, sugary, grainy, yummy, melts in your mouth, gooey, gooey praline-ness. Like, <laughs> it's so good. It reminds me of a real maraschino cherry. It has a sweet but rich flavor. That's so fantastic. I want more of these. Some of the things we're having tonight are so complex and mind blowing. And some of the things we've had tonight, like this, and the walnut with the cheese, and the little microgreens at the beginning of the day, like that are so simple, so basic, and so insanely flavorful. Amazing. They have really committed to us here with 20 incredible courses so far. And now they're proposing that we begin dessert with these beautiful chocolate rings. Yes, a million times, yes. <laughs> Ring oh, no, I'm I'm it. it makes your hair stand on end. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's exciting <laughs> description. <Let's get> <laughs> so we have a mint cucumber sorbet and then under there's a poison sauce. You know, like typical kind of umami, savory Chinese sauce. Icy sweet, refreshing mint. You have the nice milky creaminess. You have a nice crisp from the sesame. Weird savory notes from the, the poison. And then the bitter black sesame as well. It's going all over your palate. Strange, but delicious. <laughs> Love black sesame desserts. Wow. Black. I'm not a dessert guy, but I love black sesame desserts because it's playing with that sweet, bitter combo. It just mellows out the, the sweetness so much. There's a good amount of sweetness here, don't get me wrong, but the bitterness balances it. It's so good. My kind of dessert. This is the first day. The first 10 days. After one month. Uh -huh and after two months. <laughs> I highly doubt we'll ever be able to replicate anything as absolutely deliciously and as perfectly as we're having it tonight. It is so cool that they are bringing out tools and like showing us and teaching us a little bit about the process as well. This place has been like, this has been incredible. Like a mind blowing experience, like educational, fun. By the time we leave, we will have been here for like at least five hours and like, this was our activity for the day, and that is something that we are lucky enough to get to do with our longer stays with our digital nomad lifestyle, where we are spending a month in a place. But oh, what a day! Like I, this has not been. This has been a day well spent. We have learned. We have played. This is an experience. This isn't just a meal, but it is an incredible meal. <laughs>
This is an apple that has been like aged for 60 days in 60 degrees Celsius temperatures. Oh my goodness. Every apple should taste like that. Everybody needs to age their apples at 60 degrees for 60 days. It has this deep, rich, caramelized sort of flavor. It's like a creamy applesauce. It's so good. We have made it to the courtyard. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Came outside to, to finish up our meal with some coffees and, and we ended up with this <laughs> tray of exquisite dessert. Even some of this stuff that looks like plants is for our dessert. We and rocks. And rocks. Yeah, we've got like some rocks over here. Start with these bonbons. We're back to our tricks with that not all of olive we got earlier. Thin layer of chocolate on the outside. First mm. juice in there. Cotton candy tree dusted with cacao. Playing to childhood memories, going to the fair, but then elevated with a very, very nice cacao dusting on top. We're eating our dessert garden in the most beautiful little garden. I feel like I'm in a dream right now. We're about to eat this random leaf. Mm -hmm. It's like a basil white chocolate, which is a stunning combination of flavors. Love, love, love. Raspberry thing. She's giving us very thorough explanations of everything she's serving us, but everything has such an elaborate and exciting description that we're just like, what? This looks like one of those little things that you put into water and then it expands to become a washcloth, but that's not what it is. <laughs> Do you know that for sure? I can now confirm it's not what it is. <laughs> like this crazy, grainy, powdery texture, but this delicious, like freeze-dried raspberry sort of flavor. I just love what they're doing with textures here. Raspberry on marshmallow. Mm. Raspberry on marshmallow. But it's like the best marshmallow you've ever eaten in your life. Okay, a little green sponge thing. Matcha-y, limey, great combo, bubbly chocolate texture. Now I believe we're supposed to be able to eat these rocks. Okay. <laughs> if you not, about to break my tooth. <laughs> yeah, dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal. What an experience. I am stuffed to the brim and just Gl like delighted, tickled, yeah. and We're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the incredible food, but the incredible experience behind every single thing we were served, and like the incredible service itself. Highly recommend. As the name says, I am satisfied. We disfruit hard very much. <laughs> very much enjoyed. But you guys, I can't even button my jacket now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a problem. Oh my God. Worth it though. Absolutely worth it. You were there for five and a half hours. <laughs> like it was an activity. We might not ever eat again. We feel so blessed to get to take a bite out of the best the world has to offer and to have you along with us. Thank you so much for joining us for this mad venture. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It seriously helps us so much. Join us on the next one for more of the best the world has to offer. We'll see you then.